Hello again, everybody, and welcome back. This example, example 10.7, is, um, is one that's going to be the principle on, upon which, uh, if, we, uh, if we do it, the ballistic pendulum lab is going to be based. Um, this is a pendulum right here. And at the very end of the pendulum, is we call it a bob. Um, it's probably called it something else because this is going to be called a bullet right here, and they both start with B, so I'll probably change one of the names so we have different, uh, different first letters. But um, this bullet is fired at the bob. If you, can, if you look really closely, you'll see right in there um, is sort of a, a recess where the bullet can kind of settle inside the bob, and then once they, they collide, um, the, uh, some of the momentum from the bullet is transferred to the momentum of the whole bullet and bob system. And so that whole system has, kinetic, has velocity and therefore kinetic energy and then, then moves up to some potential or to some height that's in accordance with the potential energy that, that that goes with. So there's a few steps that are mentioned right here, but I think this is a little bit backwards. Uh, what we're looking to find right here is the initial speed of the bullet. Okay, That right there, I'll use a different color than black. That right there is what we're trying to find, the, the original velocity or the initial velocity of the bullet. So what that means is we should probably go from what we know backwards towards what we don't know. So I'm going to suggest ignoring these three steps right here. We'll actually carry them all out, but we'll, we'll carry them out in the reverse order. We're going to go from um, knowing this height and knowing this angle, by the way, which is, what's that, 42 degrees right there? Okay. That's 42 degrees, and um, using our trig, and we've done problems like this before, where we use uh, tr this angle and the length of, the, of the, the pendulum rod to figure out what this height is. Um, the potential energy gained or lost through this height is the same kinetic energy as the, the pendulum or the, the, the bob and ball has right here, and that will kind of inform us as to what the original velocity of the ball should be. All right, so that's kind of our, our plan of action right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start on the far, um, on the far side, this side, and then work backwards. I'm going to do this in a series of steps. So, okay, we have the mass of the bullet. We have the mass of the bob. I'll tell you what, instead of coming up with different names, I'll just do the bullet in a, in a lowercase b and the bob in a, an uppercase b. Um, and um, we've got the mass of the bob, too, all right? And we've got the length of this pendulum rod right here. Now, we're going to ignore the mass of it. We're just going to just pretend that it's like maybe a, some sort of a rigid string or something that's, um, that doesn't have much mass. And that's the length of it right there. And so when it swings up to a height that we don't quite know yet, but that angle that it makes with a vertical is 42 degrees. So let me see if I can move this up here like that. All right, and I may need to do some more moving around as well because I got a feeling I'm going to be using a lot of space here. So I'm going to start, first of all, I'm going to move this way. From there to there in, um, uh, in trying to find out what our initial velocity of the bullet was. Okay, so I'm, going to, I'm just going to, going to call this step one. Okay, and that is what is the height? What is the height? It looks like an N right there, doesn't it? What is the height that the, uh, the bullet and, and bob swings up to? All right. Well, down here, that's the size of them when um, the bullet connects. Or that's the, the, the position of, of the bob when the bullet connects it. And this right here is going to be what it swings up to when the bullet is inside the bob. All right, this angle right here, that's 42 degrees. All right, and um, the question is, what is this height right there? All right, that's going to be very important. Why? Because at the very top right here, I'll do this in, do this in blue, we have potential energy due to gravity, right? It's, it's gone up to some height and it's no longer moving and all this, this energy that it had here gets turned into potential energy and so what's eventually going to happen is probably going to swing back down, right? But we know that to be equal to mgh. That's why h is going to be so important because 
um, that determines how much potential energy it has. All right, why does that matter? Well, because assuming conservation of energy, then the potential energy at the top right here is going to have to be equal in magnitude to the amount of kinetic energy that the system has. All right, the kinetic energy, that's a pretty terrible K. Let's try that again, the kinetic energy that the system has. So if these are going to be equal, we should be able to find the velocity of the bullet and bob system. I should put a, put a little bullet in there, I guess. There we go. The bullet and bob system, because we know the mass of, of both of them together. And um, we should be able to solve for the velocity right there. All because we set this energy equal to that energy. Okay, Conservation of energy. So it's moving right here, and it goes up, and then it stops. Now, it's not moving, but it has uh, potential energy. All right, but the important thing is to find this H right here. <clears throat> okay? So we've done a problem like this before where we've taken and kind of broken this into a right triangle. All right? So that's a right triangle right there. I'm going to call this side A uh, for ad adjacent. So this right here from here to here. I'm going to call it A. You can call it whatever you want, honestly. But um, we, we want to solve for this H right here. So if we can solve for this A, we can just take the whole length of the pendulum, which uh, what is the whole length of the pendulum right there? It is, I believe, um, oops, 0 0.75 meters, right? Right there. Okay, so this is 0 0.75 meters. That's functioning as our, as our hypotenuse, right? All right, so let's find out what A is. Well, A is adjacent to the angle, so we're, we're going to use cosine. So the cosine of 42 degrees is um, the adjacent of the hypotenuse, all right? Is A over 0 0.75 meters, which means that the side A I should do that in orange, I guess. A is going to be 0 0.75 times a cosine, 42 degrees. All right, what do we get if we, if we calculate for A? I get a total of A equals 0 0.56 meters. All right, so this is 0 0.56. I'm writing so small, I'm trying to save space right here, but it means that my writing isn't all that great. If this is 0 0.56 and the whole length of the pendulum is 0 0.75, then that means our H, I'm going to write that in red again, our H is going to be, oh, here we are, um, 0 0.75, the whole length of it minus 0 0.56. And for me, I get that our height h is going to be 0 0.19 meters. All right, let's dotted line box that right there. I know that's really squeezed in there like that, 0 0.9 meters. That's going to be really important to us because this is the height that the pendulum swings upwards. All right, it increases that height right there. So therefore, at the highest point, that the, that the pendulum stops right there, it's got a potential energy. Potential energy equals mgh. So what's the mass of the whole pendulum and bob system? Well, it's their mass is added together, right? So the, um, or the, the bullet and bob system. So that's going to be lowercase b plus uppercase b, right, that mass times G times H. So the mass of the, the bullet is 0 0.05 kilograms. There's one of 0.50 kilograms I should put in there. I should use significant figures, I figure. 050 kilograms plus the mass of the bob, that is the, the thing that the bullet goes into. That is 1.5 kilograms. All right, times 9.81. Um, 
meters per second squared times our height, which we just calculated, which is 0 0.19 meters. Okay. All right. So the potential energy that the bullet and bob has when it goes up here is in accordance with those, those values. What do we get if we calculate the potential energy? I get 2.89. 2.89 joules. We can dot a line box that if we want, but even that isn't going to be what's uh, terribly important to us. What is going to be important to us is the fact that that potential energy that it gains going up is the exact same thing <clears throat> as the kinetic energy that, that the whole bullet and bob system has right after it has been collided with. All right, the kinetic energy right here at 2, that's what we're going to be solving for right there. So what is that? Well, that's 1 half mass of B and big B, and both the masses together, right, times the velocity of that system, B, B squared. All right, the velocity of both of them. The kinetic energy is equal to the potential energy, and the kinetic energy, of course, is 1 half mass times the velocity squared. So what we can do is we can find that velocity because we know the mass of both of them. We know that the value of that, that kinetic energy is. We can find the velocity that they have. Once we do that, we can then use conservation of momentum to work backwards to figure out how fast must that ball or that bullet have been moving to cause the system to have that velocity afterwards. Okay? So, um, by the way, I should probably label these different... Uh, everything we've been dealing with so far has been at position three. I'm going to call this position two right here. And all the way back before the collision, we're going to call that one. All right. So um, I'll put a little subscript two right here. It's really the velocity at two at that position right there. All right. So let's solve for that velocity. What is it going to be? Okay. The velocity of the bullet and Bob system together is going to be what? Well, we're going to have to um, let's see, multiply our 2 up over here, right? So it's going to be 2 times 2.89 joules. And um, divide by the mass of the system, right? That's um, what is the mass of the system, by the way? That is uh, 1.55, I think, right? 1.55 kilograms. So I just added them together in my head. That was the 0.05 plus 1.5 right there. That's the mass of the system. And um, so that mass has been divided down. We just need to take the square root now, right, to get th just the velocity. So that's going to be our equation for the velocity of the system at 2 after the collision takes place. All right? Let's multiply that out and see what we get. I don't know about you, but I get a final velocity of one point. 1.93 meters per second. Very important to us. All right. By the way, up until this point, we've been talking about collisions and talking about initial velocity and final velocity. I hesitate to call this, oops, um, I hesitate to call that initial velocity right there because um, it's really the final velocity after this collision right here. So that's why I call it velocity at 3, velocity at 2, velocity at 1. All right, so really we're going to be solving for that velocity at one right there. I'm going to refrain from calling it initial or final because the final of one part is the initial of another one. Um, okay, so we've gone from using trig to figure out the height to figuring out the potential energy that it has at that height to setting that equal to the kinetic energy that it has to solving for the velocity that it has r right initially at, after the collision. Okay, now we can solve for and I'll do this, in, uh, do this in red again. We can solve for the velocity at 1 right there. All right? Um, it looks like initial velocity, but it's going to be for the velocity at 1. So what we can do here is we can use conservation of momentum. We have a bullet with momentum, a bob with momentum, well, zero momentum, and then together they have a combined momentum. They have a combined mass, and they have a combined velocity. What is that velocity? It's what we just solved for right here. So let's write out an equation 
all right? The, uh, uh, the using conservation of momentum, okay? Conservation of mom, right? Conservation of momentum. Uh, so, the momentum of the bullet at one plus the momentum of the bob at point one is going to be equal to the momentum of the bullet and bob at two, right? That's conservation of momentum. Before collision, the combined momenta, and after the collision, uh, the momentum is going to, be, uh, going to be equal to each other. So that means that the mass of the bullet times initial, I should say, ooh, the velocity at one, of the bullet, right? Which, by the way, that's what we're solving for right there. Plus the mass of the bob times the velocity at one of the bob. Hey, what's going to happen to that? It's sitting still, right? It's zero, so that whole thing's going to go away. It's going to be equal to the mass of the bullet and the bob times the velocity of the bullet and the bob at that's a little two right there, at two, all right? Which is what we just solved for right there. So we should pretty easily be able to solve for the, the velocity at one of the bullet, which is really what the problem is asking us for. All right, so let's, let's turn this around and just solve for that, and then I think we'll be done. First of all, that, that goes away, so the bob wasn't initially moving, so that becomes zero, all right? If we're just solving for the velocity at one of the bullet, all we have to do is divide this whole side by the mass of the bullet right here. The velocity at one of the bullet is going to be mass of the bullet and the bob times velocity of the bullet and the bob after the collision, right? It's going to be at point two, all divided by the mass of the bullet. All right, well, that's going to be 1.55 kilograms. That's the added masses, right, times the velocity of the both of them together. We solved that just a minute ago, right? That's the 1.93 meters per second. 1.93 meters per second, the combined velocity, all divided by the mass of the bullet, which is 0 0.050 kilograms. So initial velocity, or velocity at 1 at the bullet is going to be what? I get a final answer of... 59.8 meters per second. That's our final answer for the velocity of the bullet. So just to recap, the initial velocity of the, of the bullet right here. So just to recap, we worked this way. We worked from what we knew towards what we, do, we don't know. Use trig to find this height to find the potential energy that it has at three, potential energy due to gravity. Okay. We use conservation of energy to set that equal to the kinetic energy that it has at 2, down there at the bottom. All right. So they're going to be equal to each other. Knowing the kinetic energy, or knowing what the value of it is, we're able to, we're able to solve for the velocity that this system had at 2. And then using conservation of momentum, we are able to use the combined masses and the velocity after the collision to figure out what the velocity of the one mass that was moving initially had to be in order to make that whole system work. So this is going to be the, going to be the principle upon which, uh, if you do it, the, um, uh, the ballistic pendulum lab is going to operate. You're going to calculate this velocity right here using basically these same principles, this, uh, uh, this angle and um, uh, the angle that a, a, the pendulum moves up and the length of the pendulum and the mass of, of, of all the different parts right there. And we're going to calculate it a different way as well to confirm if our answer is correct or not. So I hope that helps. This is example 10.7. And uh, if you have any questions, make sure you come see me. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.